Oh, amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Come on. Again, thanks to uh, Frank and Cindy for doing an awesome job there for communion contribution. Yeah. I do just have to lift up the church, guys, because today we gave a 15 times, did we not? Yeah. And I felt awesome about giving 15 times, and I know you probably feel awesome as well, but I really just want to lift the church up. If you look at your bulletin here, of course, that, uh, that hymn that wrote it was me. <laughs> Uh, of course, you can take a look at the awesome pictures there. Of course, my daughter uh, got recruited by Sal there for the AMS ministry. And of course, we remember Eldrin coming on in and preaching the word there. It was pretty encouraging. And of course, our sister Grace getting baptized. And of course, uh, Roger and Kama as our shepherds. But if you look on the back, you can see our, our tithe for the church. For everybody to give what they pledge would be $1,625. What we have been giving on average for last month was $2,300. The month before special missions. I want to lift you up for not robbing God, but honoring him with your sacrifice. You guys are amazing. Of course, if you look over in Matthew chapter 3, we'll get in our text for today's lesson. In Matthew chapter 3 and verse 13, it says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him. He said, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented as soon as Jesus was baptized. He went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Yeah. You got John the Baptist, kind of a, a bigger, burly guy, kind of like Roger Parlor. <laughs> And as he's there in the Jordan, he's telling people to repent for the kingdom of God is near. And people are coming into that murky water of the Jordan River. And John would then dip them all the way down in the water and baptize them. But then Jesus, maybe a guy kind of looking like Raphael, yeah. there you go. comes forward Come <laughs> to get baptized by John the Baptist. And John at first is kind of leery because this is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And as he takes him under, Jesus comes up out of the water and the sky splits apart. And as the sky opens on up, the Spirit from God comes down and lights on him as a testimony to the people that were there. And for any baptized disciple, that's kind of how it happened at your baptism too, wasn't it? I mean, as you were in there in that trough and you got plunged in that water and you came out, you could literally see the ceiling open up and you could see the Spirit from God lighting on you. And then you heard that voice, didn't you? This is my son or my daughter whom I love. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that how it was when you got baptized? That's how it was when I got baptized at 11.33 at night. The sky opened up and there was light. I felt awesome. Anything could have been happening. I was feeling great about my life. My apartment could have burned down. I could have got my car stolen. I could have just been wherever without food, without clothes. I, I, did, I didn't care. I was fired up. Remember when you got baptized, how you're feeling? Yep. And you're ready to take on the world, aren't you? Yeah. Well, let's look in the very next verse, chapter 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. <laughs> You'd be hungry too. Yeah. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, 
He will command his angels concerning you, that they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Psalm 91, verse 11 and 12. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Deuteronomy 6, 16. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Deuteronomy 6, 13. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. And the church said, Amen. And maybe that's how it was after your baptism. <laughs> when you got that spirit... You then get led by the Spirit, the title of today's sermon. On, huh? Led by the Spirit. Come on. As Jesus was being led by the Spirit, the place that the Spirit takes him is the middle of the desert. Wow. Where there's nothing else around. But the Spirit takes him to the desert only to fast for 40 days and 40 nights and to be tempted by Satan himself. Because faith that isn't tested can't be trusted. Uh, right. And as he's there for 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, no bread or food or drink, Satan comes to him and tempts him with his flesh of being hungry. If you are the Son of Man, tries to put doubt in who Jesus really is. If you are the Son of God, if you are, prove it. Satan even quotes scripture to him. The one that really got me was through verse 8 through 9. He takes Jesus to the temple of God. And he has him stand on the highest point, at the top of this building. And as he's standing up there, they're looking over the whole city, and Satan says, we'll just go ahead and jump on down. Of course, he takes him to a high mountain and shows them the splendor of all the world, all the kingdoms of the world. And Satan tells them that all this he would give Jesus. Think about that for a second. Jesus would rule the whole world. Isn't that what he came to do? So why would this be a temptation? To get world evangelism! But without the cross, the one thing that Jesus didn't want to do, Satan tempts him with it. Matthew chapter 27, Jesus prayed three times for three hours. Not my will, but your will be done. If there's any other way, take this cup from me. You see, the very thing Jesus didn't want to do was go to the cross. And that's the very thing Satan tempts him with. I'll give you world evangelism, but without the sacrifice trying to make a deal with Satan. But Jesus comes back. It is written. My first point is the tempter coming to you. In Luke chapter 22, in verse 31 through 32, Jesus talking to Simon Peter. He says, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And then that kind of how it is. I love Andrew Smelly, the evangelist down in New York. And some of you do too. <laughs> but he always preached that people are like tea bags. Because you don't know what's in them until you put them in hot water. And when you get put in that hot water, you really find out what kind of faith you have. Yep. Because a faith that isn't tested can't be trusted. But you know God plus one equals the majority? In Romans 16 verse 14... There's a brother that Paul addressed as Hermas. Now it's known in history that Hermas wrote a text, a book called The Shepherd. In this book called The Shepherd, he says, The devil cannot hold dominion over the servants of God, who with all their heart place their hopes in him. The devil can wrestle against them, but he cannot overthrow them. You see, because God plus one equals the majority. Have you ever had a hard week? Yeah. Have you ever had that time where you felt like you were going through the desert? And you're going, why am I here? I thought I'd just be...